Hi y'all, it's Caroline. Today I want to talk about using different brands of embossing folders in the Diamond Press Marquee. Yes, we love our Diamond Press Marquee, but the folders are not very deep, are they? So I experimented a lot and used different brands, including this Sizzix brand embossing folders, and here are the dies. We're going to make a card later, so stick around, and had great success. I think the folders are just deeper. Now, if you run them through with too much shim, because I did some experiments, the cardstock folds and wrinkles, and this is not for 3D folders. Please, disclaimer, not 3D folders. But here's a Anna Griffin cut and emboss folder. I used that in my last video. It was perfect results. And because the die is embedded in the folder and you run it right through, not a problem as long as it goes through that opening. Here's a Sizzix Tim Holtz alterations folder. And I used Anna Griffin foil card stock. And because it is a thicker card stock, like 110 pounds, maybe, maybe more. Um, it was perfect impression. Not a problem. No wrinkles. I loved it. And here's a Doris folder. Um, we all have these. Not too deep impression. It's not super deep, but here are the, um, the hearts that came out. You can tell, but I think that we can do better. And I'm going to use another set that I have from Sizzix, and that's how I store my things in those plastic envelopes. And because this has a complete card front size, like an A2 size, um, I'm just going to use that today for an example. And same like I used for this So Sweet um, card that we're going to make. It had a full page, full front of the card impression. I like to use that whitewash coordinations because it sands off just perfectly and you see that impression come through. And then what is revealed is that bottom color. And that's what we want. We want that very clear impression to show up. Now these are just regular cardstock, and there was a lot of buckling and wrinkling, and this is like 80 pounds. Pretty common that we get from Hobby Lobby. And after several tries through my marquee, and I never forced anything. I did not, you know, really have to bear down on that handle. No, I'm not going to do that. But what I used with success was one shim, which was a two size, four and a quarter by five and a half, and the folder, and the cardstock I wanted to use as my card front. And this is the trick. I just used a little bit of water. If you have a mister or just a little spray bottle, um, just plain water, and all we're doing is breaking up the fiber, giving a little relaxation to the binding of that fiber as it goes through the machine, like it stretches just the tiniest bit and lets that paper just sail through without that wrinkling or buckling. And then it dries. It doesn't harm the paper at all dries perfectly flat, and I had success with every single time I, I did this. Now, you don't saturate the, the paper, no. You just give it just a, just a mist of water. And I use that one shim just to get a deeper impression. And no, you don't have to use the shim, but it just... You know, why not? So I'm just going to place it on top just to 
so I can hold on to it. And as you can see, I'm not forcing that handle at all. It's sailing right through. And you can see there's a, yeah, there's a little um, wetness, but it's going to dry perfectly flat. In fact, I place those card fronts underneath my cutting mat, that mat that you see me working on, and that alone flattens it out after it dries. Not a problem. Again, I'm just using my um, sanding pad. That's actually like a pottery tool, and it just works for me. Now, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. That would be great. Now, I'm just showing you how deep I got that impression. All those little rainbows and unicorns came out perfect. So, next step, let's make a card. Okay, I'm just pulling the card title through my Xyron, but I am not using the X case. And I would love for you to watch the video, one of the very first ones I did, on how to save Xyron tape. And that's by not using a case. And there it is in the corner. Please click on that or, you know, find that on my channel. So I've put together all these die cut pieces for this card front and also put some um, thicker foam tape on the back to, to uh, make them pop using my Xyron tape runner. And I'm going to attach this to a A2 size card front. And it has a score in the middle. I just haven't folded it yet. And that just keeps my work from popping up as I work, as, are, as I attach those completed die cuts to the front. I don't know why I haven't used this uh, die set in the past. I think it because I was worried about, or I know I did, I collected them all first, and then I'd use them later. Because um, if you remember, he came out with, or Sizzix came out like with a whole set, you know, mermaids, unicorns, um, llamas, you know, all that stuff. Um, in sets for easy card making. Now that donut, I used some Nuvo drops and a um, a marker for those little sprinkles on top. I was not going to do the whole tweezers picking up tiny little bits of paper. It was just easier to add them with the um, dimension drops. Just a few more touches with my clear glue. Sometimes simple or simpler is better. I'm just going to add a little string after I get this title on to complete this card. I know it's going to be a perfect thank you card with that sentiment on top. So sweet. Like, so sweet of you to do whatever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
sure to bring a smile to someone's face that did something nice for me. So please get something in the mail this week. This kind of card will only cost you one stamp. That will be forever appreciated. So thanks for watching. And I'll just catch you next time.